Good morning, everyone. Uh, we have four minutes to afternoon, so I, I'll just use this four minutes for the morning. Um, we're going to have a session on building facility, evidence, impact, and care by Ambrosi Johnson and Francia Stradom from the University of the Free State. I see that the cheering is now on like Donkey Kong. I saw it. Very few people in this, no, some of us in the audience will understand Donkey Kong, others won't. Um, I have the privilege to introduce Ambrosia Johnson to you. Uh, we call her Emmy, and she'll tell her story. Emmy! Thank you so much, Prof. Good morning, everyone. As introduced, my name is Ambrosia Johnson. I'm a final year LLB student at the University of the Free State, and I'm a student assistant for a program called Hashtag Secure the Grad and the Center for Teaching and Learning. I'm extremely passionate about community engagement and youth development, and I believe that student success support was specifically designed for students like me. Students that want more out of university than just a degree. As we relentlessly chase our goals, we know that there are people behind us that will support us as we succeed. As a student, I've occupied various positions in the university such as student leadership, serving on executive of student associations, volunteering with non-profits, acting as an institutional audit ambassador, and now being an employee. Therefore, there's always been a need to balance my academics with my personal aspirations. And that's why student support has been a, an essential part of my university journey. The support provided is more than just study strategies, academic advising, and tutorials. But it's about having someone in your corner that understands, acknowledges how far you've come and pushes you towards doing better. I am confident that the services available to students are put in place to cater to the individualistic nature of all student needs. Student support provides students with an opportunity to be more than just a student. It encourages holistic development and when students are encouraged to think beyond their studies, they have an opportunity to build their own narrative and in turn, this places them in control of their dignity. I started working as a student assistant in the university to better serve the student community in unlocking their full potential. This has allowed me to experience student success, not only as a student, but through the lens of an employee. It has broadened my perspective on how critical the work that we do is and how much the university wants students to succeed. The work that we do is centered solemnly around the student, with the student at the center of it all. I believe that student success is not linear, and we cannot use a blanket approach and expect students to succeed. As a law student, I am a firm believer that dignity should inform all of our practices. Therefore, we cannot be naive to assume that equal opportunity equals the dignity of all students. We cannot bring a person who has been hopped by chains for years, liberate them, bring them up to the starting line, and say that you are now free to compete with others and still justly believe that we have been fair. It is thus not enough to open the gates of opportunity without sufficient support. A similar approach can be taken with student success. We cannot expect students who come from a disadvantaged background to compete with students who have always been advantaged and expect equal results. Student support allows all students, no matter their background, to have an equal opportunity at success. Therefore, their demographic does not determine their destiny. Yes. What I've come to realize working as a student is that student success is not a job, but rather a passion. And I can personally attest that the student support services at the University of the Free State is firmly founded on impact, servitude, and care. I can't begin to imagine a world where student success support does not exist. I think it would be like load shedding, just without candles. <laughs> for, for most students, university is an extremely unknown concept, especially for first generation students. Student success support bridges the gap between the inequalities and demographical differences 
and it creates a sense of belonging, and that belonging ignites success. Without support, students would need to pave their own way, and if we're being honest, I think most of us would be stranded. I have personally experienced university without asking for help, and I felt like a failure. I felt like I was in complete darkness, and I did not know the way to go. Student success support picked me up, carried me into the light, and for that, I am eternally grateful. Thank you.
through the first year experience course. And you'll see why this is important in a second. A step, we were doing large scale tutorials, if only I took it to the next level. Google did a small amount of work in advising. <laughs> right? If you look at the number of students uh, we are able to reach now. Then ARLD, Michelle Hubert and her team, uh, almost double the number of students in academic literacy. And in the right side, the numbers are climbing consistently. Right, and you'll see why all of these are important. So, you just to come. So, UFSS, just that you have background again, the first year experience course, 16 credits mandatory for 8,200 students a year, right? In addition to their degree work, right? Because there isn't a session category for this work yet. Maybe that's something which is added that for. First semester, student success skills. After the first semester, recap on student success because I've had my first exams and I've taken a knock as a first year, right? So we wake up and shake up after first semester. And then we start with entrepreneurship, digital skills, career development. Why? Because many of our students come to universities thinking they want to study one thing and then realizing this is not for me. Right? So we do that at scale, and then graduate attributes, you'll see why these things are. Look at the blue bubble, and that's the impact part of today's presentation. Depending on the semester, 66 to 78%, oh, there's a correlation with the other marks that a first year uh, achieves in their first year models, modules. So, I'm not going to talk about the table if you've got statistics questions. Ruan, put up your hand. <laughs> yes. Focus on the words. Remember, remember what Marie said yesterday. Students at UF, that take UFSS, marks on average contribute 25 times more to their average first year final marks than their AP score, that's the marks they come from uh, school with, and 20 times more than school quinta. So your demographics are not your destiny, because we've got UFSS, and that's the story we want to share with you. Where's in Sunday? Where's he? He asked yesterday to share practices. There you go. As with the national data, we are getting more quintal 1 to 3 students at the University of the Free State. This course helps them with the transition. So if you want a practice that comes for us at least as close to a level playing field in first year, this is it. Tutorials. Evodia is the biggest employer on campus. You'll see why that's important later. You can see our face-to-face -face numbers are going to peak over the levels. Um, we can talk about the evaluation and the portfolios, but look at the qualitative data here. Especially for first years, this helps. Tutorials helps them to adapt. It's more interactive. Things we know, right? It's easier to interact because I don't have to ask questions in a big class. Small groups, I can give my opinion. Everybody is going like, oh, wow, well, this is very fascinating. Can I wake up at some point? Look at the last line. Bringing in multilingualism has changed the picture for our students. So that students can explain to each other in a tutorial concepts in their first language. But they have to report back to the tutor in English. Because then they learn the code switching, newest project. Academic language and literacy development. Right, so only one in four students who write the MBTs, and not many of our students write the MBTs, right? Um, they are found to be academically proficient, right? In terms of English. That is because 93% of our students have English as a second, third, or fourth language. Only 7% of our students are first language English speakers. 
We don't only rely on the NBT, Ruan, and that's, this has been published with, I think, Australian colleagues now. 85% um, accuracy rate, which, which we can place students now using the algorithm uh, for this support. An impact analysis, look at these words very carefully. When an African student, again, data that Mari showed yesterday, Charles showed us what happens to students from this group. Participate in at least one right side session. Now a right side session is me going to sit with somebody individually and talk about my draft essay and getting feedback just once. Right. Look at the impact. 8.1% uh, increase in the credits that they get and a 15% higher likelihood in terms of graduating. 15% on average uh, a correlation with their average uh, uh, mark at the end of first year when you're part of the course that we provide. For quintile one to three students, uh, if you participate in the academic literacy course, an 8% higher average final mark at the end of the year. There's a, a lot. How much time do I have, Louisa? Right. Five more minutes. Okay, got it. Ten. Great, thanks. Okay, academic advising, as I said, Google is slightly busy. Um, so, here you can see the number of students that we reached in 2022. Um, what Siapu Malena created was a platform for us to talk. The academic advising work stream that we had in Siapu Malena laid the foundations for a collaborative grant from the Department of Higher Education and Training. This cycle is 17 million rand. And we've been privileged enough to work with Georgia State colleagues and develop a short learning program that has now trained 303 qualified advisors for the South African system. 18 of this 26 institution, because of the CLP Malela network, have had their staff trained with us. Right? That is the power that we have when we talk and work together. ELETSA, uh, we created a Southern African Academic Advising Association. We had two national webinars. The second one was on the 19th of this month. Uh, colleagues from the US, Alison Calhoun Brown from Georgia State. Um, and we had representatives of NACARA. And we are, maybe, should I say, should I know? Um, there's tremendous interest in us hosting the first global advising conference on the African continent. Woo! So, if you think networks are powerful, get ready for what's coming. <laughs> but still, for the University of the Free State, our success rates have improved, but if you look at the inequality that we are facing in this country, this is not translating fast enough to degrees in minimum time, right? So 40% of our three-year degree students uh, graduate in minimum time. If you think oh, they do all this work and look at that percentage, that's between 5 and 10% higher than the national average, right? So our new target is graduating in minimum time. We have huge achievement gaps, that is our target between Males, females, Charles' data yesterday, black, white, also Charles' data yesterday. And career employability, because of the expanded definition that we received from the CHE yesterday. So what is Siap Mulera enabled for us? New partnerships on the journey to Seriti. We were able to have, we were able to be in a collaboration now with the Michael and Susan Dow Foundation. What students see is the stamp in the right top corner, GPS at UFS. That's what a student is starting. And Emmy is not having that privilege, right? Because we're rolling that out systematically now. But this project for us is the digitally enhanced student success and employability program. Three components to it, digital skills development, scaled responsive student tracking, and thirdly, career development and employability. Digital skills, competency pathway, you heard in our um, 
the report that we presented that there needs to be coordination around uh, digital skills developed in the country. What we've done, we researched 16 different digital skills frameworks and did a thematic analysis and identified these four themes. The ICT proficiency, digital citizenship, information data media, literacy and then digital creation. We have three levels across the three year degree. Level four is the advanced level if the School of Accounting tells us we want our accountants to all know R when they get their degrees. So that work is currently going out with both level one, level two and three will be done at the end of this year. Scaled responsive student tracking, we're building a system that integrates on the left the uh, scaled responsive tracking um, we were nudged by COVID to develop, right? So that is a bi-weekly scanning of the top 5% at risk students that are identified at the University of the Free State. The last run was three and a half. Three and a half thousand students. We phoned them through a success coach call center to talk to them about how can we help you, how can we refer you uh, to help. On the right hand side, that's the minimum time to degree work. What are the critical signposts that a student needs to achieve to get to their degree in minimum time? The career development uh, and employability pathway, this is version 1.0. We're currently refining it. We, I think, writing up the report. Oh, it's done. Thank you. It's like ridiculous. It's the 30th of June. We have like eight reports due. Um, so, the first year you saw UFSS, I mentioned the graduate attributes and the employability. So UFSS, all first years get that, right? In your second year, you need to start focusing on work experience, Evodia tutorial, student assistantship, the wonderful student presentation, student leadership, mentorship that you did. That's work experience. I hope you've captured it. <laughs> Is it on your LinkedIn profile? <laughs> Why not? I wasn't, but come here. Let's talk. <laughs> right? Okay. Um, what you need to do in your second and your third year. Right? And in your final year, we've developed a new module called Enterprise Your Degree. It's an e-portfolio course. It's going to be our, be our fifth I impact practice, so I don't bore see up Mulela colleagues with the first call. For Kresge, you let me talk fast. I cannot thank you enough for being co city builders. Um, believing in South Africa, when you started this work, there was no real evidence that have told me we didn't say that. But we were somewhere here at the, the fire and ice place. We were there in a small room. We were talking about how are we going to get South Africans to start talking to each other about this stuff. Because all they do is compete the crap out of each other. Right? Crap is a technical term. For you. Right? Thank you for staying with us on the journey. I, I, I wonder how many foundations can claim that they've sent hundreds of people across the ocean to a community of thousands of people that are working on exactly the same challenges. And they can talk and they can share. And then you bring people from another island in the bottom. <laughs> And they're our rugby nemesis. It's a bold move. You heard it. Was, it was in the presentation this morning. 1995 is a sore point. We are so looking forward to continuing this journey and this work with you. That we can scale and build city here in the US in New Zealand. Thank you. Any questions? Or do you want...
Um, good afternoon. I'm going to stand up because you called me by name. <laughs> uh, thanks for a great presentation. It's really good to see the evidence, you know, since 1.0 to now and all the good work, I mean, if it, all institutions. I'm just going to ask you a question related to one of the slides where you showed success rates in uh, mainstream and extended. And I've noted with concern across multiple institutions that we still have that gap between extended programs and mainstream. And considering the resources that we're putting in extended programs, as well as the resources we're putting in, sub in student support initiatives, such as the ones that you've presented here. And the question is, in fact, I just want to hear your opinion on this, because uh, it's something that has been bothering me for a while. Should we continue developing more extended programs, or should we stick to mainstream and take the resources, such initiatives, and upscale them for all students? It's the same cohort coming from basic education, just distributed across extended and mainstream. Although the APS scores are lower and so on, but we, you have seen we've been introducing more. What would be the most efficient way to achieve CIRID in that context? Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Um, so I use CDT very carefully because I'm learning. I've been learning my whole life about the wonders of this continent and its people. Right? So, for me, the answer is both. Because you have to make access as wide as you can to give the poorest of the poor a shot. But you can see up in Malela foundation programs a little bit. Evidence-based. Is it working? What's the evidence? There is not a agreement about foundation programs. There's been publications in South Africa where some people say these programs don't work. That's not the experience of the University of the Free State. But with us, we focus all our pedagogical innovation on that group. Because we knew um, the under-resourced environments that they come from. There's absolutely nothing wrong with their brains and potential. So we focused all our pedagogical innovation, mathematics, we talked about the pathways, the stuff that we're doing there with, with Kresge support again, decolonizing um, uh, uh, the curriculum um, and creating the best possible way of intervening. So I, I feel we have to have N, we have to have N plus one, if you look at Murray's data, I think N plus 2, return on investment, let me not be too controversial, because that's big, big sums. But I think if you say everybody should be mainstream and you have to take three years for your degree, you are, it's very close to an anti-poor stance. And you're trying to make as if Apartheid and what has happened, what Murray showed from 1994 to now, because the inequality is worse. You're making as if that doesn't exist. And that's not serenity, it's not integrity. Politics very seldom is about serenity. <laughs> Education should be. Unfortunately, time is up and I was told it's not me. I'm giving instructions as well. So. 
Time for the next presentation. Thank you, Francois, and I'm